Hi guys, my name is Anastasia and today we will see the most exciting and so popular TV show My 600 pounds weight So guys, it will be the third, uh, the third episode, sorry, uh, ninth season and I hope it will be really interesting And guys, you know, I realized how difficult it is these people to live in real life and this is really like a crazy challenge to change everything and I hope they can handle it So, as usual, I will watch this video with you, speak my mind, share my emotion, maybe philosophize a little, but I immediately apologize that every three seconds my screen will flash because YouTube doesn't skip this video in a different way and I try to fix it, but it doesn't work at any another way. <laughs> so, but I will be really very grateful uh, for your likes and comments and I will read it with my pleasure. So, let's do it, let's start. I hate that I have to be taken care of. It's humiliating. That it's destroys my hero. morale. Mm -hmm. Somewhere in me is this little glimmer of hope. I just want to be a normal person. It's so scary. It's really so scary. You can't do it. And then I just get mad. If I don't make a change now, I'm scared. It's going to be too late. I refuse to stop fighting. I have to do this for my children. So Michaels. with all these things, not liking people, how in the world do you get such a supporting wife? How did you find that? <laughs> now we can know how. 43 years old, mm -hmm. Michael Blair. Such a beautiful place. Mm. And that is their house. No. Oh, he is really big. Morning, baby. So big. Mm. Now just sleep. Morning. A lot of tattoos on their body. Every day. I wake up and struggle to start my day because of my size. Just basic things are so hard for me now. But thankfully, I'm still able to at least get out of bed. I just can't go far. Usually I can only make it to the couch or the bathroom to freshen up for the day. But it's gotten hard for me because being on my feet gets to be very painful for me. You know, I at least try to do bathroom stuff and clean up myself. But because of how hard it is, I really only shower every few days. Most of the time, the only energy I have is to sit on the side of the tub or on the toilet or wipe myself down or shave some. I just can't do much. And my wife has to help me out most. Yeah, guys, you know, the biggest problem is that there are not activities. They can't do, make a lot of sports. And of course, they they all time fatter, of course, because uh, when they just sitting on one place, it's, it's nothing. Most of the time, whether it's helping me shower when I have the energy to do that, or putting lotion or powder on areas of my body that need it, that I can't reach. Ready for me, Mikey? About. I don't want her to have to take care of me like that. But if she doesn't do it, if a rash develops in one of my folds, one of my creases, it goes fungal. Then things can get bad for me. So Kim has to, you know, powder me up like a baby on the bed. Okay. Oh, oh, baby. Hmm. Everything is harder for Michael with all that weight. So one of the things is but it can be seen that they have so warm relationship and she cares about him and you know guys i really love uh, when the couple can um, keep this feeling through the way it's so cute and difficult at the same time 
is that his skin can get rashy. And so I have to make sure that I help him put lotion on. And Michael gets very self-conscious when he can't take care of himself. And I tell him that he can be a caregiver sometimes and I can be a caregiver sometimes. Mm. But lately it's been just me and it's hard because you get tired. <laughs> Such a nice but girl. I just do it because Michael is my soulmate and I Aww. would do anything for him. It is an extremely painful way to go through life. I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy, having to carry this much weight on them. And most of the time, I just want to hide from everything. But I try to keep going and get out of the bedroom and to see my kids. We have two kids, too. Xander, who's 17, and Liam, who's 12. So I get the energy, take it to the couch, and then... And sit in. I just eat and spend my time there till I fall asleep or get tired and go to bed. Are we going both out of the No, this is good. So most of my day, it's just spent eating. And I love eating, but I hate how it's literally killing me. And I still don't want to stop because how food makes me feel. Food has basically destroyed my life already. Even though I know... Yeah, guys, obesity is a really big problem for for, for people's health and um, all affects uh, all areas of your life. It's dangerous and it's scary. I know what it's doing to me. When I'm hungry, I don't think about that. All I care about is that food is going to make me feel better. It's always done that for me. I wish it were different. It's like a drugs. Liam! Yeah? Want to play some video games? Sure. Okay. But I can't change the past. And I think that craving I have for food started when I was very young. Because when I was just a few years old, mm -hmm. my dad left, my mom and I. So we had to move in with my grandparents. And my grandma was trying to keep me fed constantly. And by the time I was seven, I was probably close to 100, 110 so pounds. Cute. Boy. And it made a perpetual... But you know, it's so typical for a grandmother. When I was younger, I mean, when I was six years old, um, I all time came to my grandmother and uh, she fed me to the society. And her favorite phrase is... Oh, Stacey, you're, you're so thin, <laughs> but I don't think the same. Yeah, and um, maybe it's uh, his problem too. Guys, and uh, grandmother are constantly <laughs> trying to feed you too. Cycle where I would get bigger, I would feel bad about being bigger. I would eat more and I kept getting bigger and bigger. And the bigger I got, the less I wanted to be around other kids because they started to make fun of my size and being picked on by everyone in school. It's very isolating and very lonely. So I stayed at home, I played video games and I ate. And that was pretty much my life for a few years. And then things got worse for me when I was 11. Uh-huh. And what's, what my happened? My mother had signed me up for a kids wilderness club thing. And a lot of the meetings were fine. But then we did an overnight camping trip. And of course the pack leader was very charismatic but unbeknownst to me at that time he was also a pedophile so he would have the boys all stripped down and go sliding down the rock slides naked and at that point it had started dawning on me but being fat i was not desirable to pedophiles so i assumed that the more i ate the less desirable i would get by getting bigger mm -hmm. so i made it my mission to get bigger and when I was around 14, I was 250 pounds. Thankfully, my mother took me out of the situation. But I was starting to get a lot bigger, and that just made the bullying at school even worse. And high school was the worst because... High school was where the real torment started. High school is when you, you really started getting... Yeah, in high school, children are more violent, and this is boiling, and uh, which is really so dangerous on moral and uh, physical level. It's it can destroy you, and of course, it's so dangerous, guys. And uh, did you have uh, bullying at your school? 
school as for me i i didn't remember but if i had i will t- t- tell about tell about it my parents of course more into the mental and emotional pain it was at emotional least pain of course year, exactly just steadily the eating habits never changed and they increased and it was a steady progression for me all through high school by the time i graduated i was probably close to 400 pounds but it wasn't holding me back to the point where i felt like i couldn't live my life because i was able to go to college after high school and that ended up being a good time for me college mm. is when i finally got confidence in myself and i started realizing that my size could be used as an asset ah oh. because i was able to get jobs doing things like being a bouncer at the club Wow. I was basically a bodyguard and I wanted to do that job better. And then uh-huh. that led me into martial arts. And at this point I was probably close to 5. It is his mother. Mm-hmm. But martial arts was making me a better person, a stronger person, and a healthier person. When I graduated, I threw myself into training even more and I fully dedicated myself to martial arts. I was training 4 days a week, 5 days a week, 6 7 hours a day. So I was fully committed to martial arts for around 7 years of my life. And over that time, I lost around 120 pounds. I was back around 380 by the time I was 25. So I was feeling good and I was in the best shape of my life. So taking martial best arts shape. it allowed me to boost my confidence so much that I was able to meet the love of my life, Kimberly. and marry her. Kimberly oh. and I actually met one night at a They're live so nice. action role playing game. She had heard about me from a friend of a friend and uh-huh. as soon as I went to this event, I see this black blur just <laughs> bolting at me. And then I get tackled <laughs> by this person and it was my wife. That was Kimberly. Michael and I met through a mutual friend and I uh, had been told so much about him about how amazing he was and how I would just fall in love with him and so when I saw this massive just tall as a giant man got out of the car I just run up to him and I tackle him and I give him a hug and uh yeah that's how we met <laughs> and it was love at first sight so Kim and I dated and it really became the first night that We spent the night with each other. Kim never left. I just never left. <laughs> oh. And I fell in love first, I think, or I said it first, and it was like months before he said it, he held out on me. <laughs> Guys, how amazing it when you find your right person, your man, your wife, your future husband. Yeah, I think it is the best feeling in your in your life when you are nearly with your partner with whom you can go through your way. Mm. How cute it is. We just fell in love with each other and have been together ever since. We were meant to be. About a year later, things were going wonderful with Michael and I and we ended up uh, having Xander. And when he was born, that's when I decided I wanted it all to be official. And so, in front of the justice of the peace, we got married. Oh. We had my infant son Xander as a witness. It was amazing. It was a day I'll never forget. Soon after that, I decided I wanted to get healthier so I could do more with my son, and Kim did too. She gained a lot of weight, probably from being around my eating habits. So we both decided to get gastric bypass surgery, and I was approved. So was Kim. She had her surgery, but I never got mine because right after I finally got my approval, I got into a car wreck. pretty bad one where I roll my car four times take out a lamp post take out a fire hydrant so they put me under going to surgery I woke up a few hours later minus a spleen I was alive but I was left with all this scarring in my abdomen and in the end the scar tissue was too extensive for gastric bypass to be possible so I ultimately couldn't get to surgery because of that and I took that news really hard and I got really depressed. And so I spent the next couple of years going back to food again until I got up to 450 pounds. 
and it took me some time and a lot of food to bring me out of it. But size once problem, I started to come back from that But size problem, it's really his, but size uh, portion, it's really his problem. A, really a huge portion. Uh, it's not a good size. Depression. Me and Kimberly began to talk about having another child. Mm. Nine months later, our second son, Liam, came out. And at that point, I stopped doing martial arts and the combination of quitting martial arts and going back to my old eating habits led me to go back up to my highest weight plus because I'm over 600 pounds now. Mm -hmm. And I have never been this big at any time in the past 43 years of my life. And it makes me really sad because there's so much I want to be able to do with my wife and sons. But life is pretty much this couch. So I can either watch TV with them, play video games, and or eat. Those are my options. And most of the time, it's just eat. And How much sleep. garlic bread would you like, sweetheart? Like three or four? Just bring the plates. We'll put them on the ottoman. Okay. No, because that way you can just pick at it. But... All right. I'm always eating. Even when I get so full, my belly feels swollen to the point that the scars on my stomach hurt from the pressure. You want some Parmesan cheese, bud? I do indeed. I still don't want to stop because of how food makes me feel. Which But I've traded that one? feeling for everything else in my life. You know, I can't go out now because I've developed a fear of being around people that I can't go outside my front door because of the agoraphobia. I can't go into stores. I don't oh, want people whoa. to see me. And the worst part about that isn't what it's doing to my life. It's how it affects my family's life. And especially with my kids, because I can't take my kids outside. We don't play outside. We play video games, you know? We eat food, you know? And my kids, my kids love me, you know? But I know, I know I'm an embarrassment. I won't go to school functions. I don't want people to see what their dad looks like because that just makes them a target. Michael just, he's an amazing person, but he... He simply closed himself in from people, from work, and maybe even from life, yeah, but he has just big and deep depression that lives inside him and all time destroy for a small, small sink. Mm. Has a tendency to look at the negative and he doesn't believe in himself and he doesn't love himself. And I wish he could see through my eyes because I can see how amazing he is. That he's a glowing star and I want him one day to see that. But I hate hiding. I hate being ashamed, and I hate how I'm trapped. I am extremely trapped, both in my body and in my mind. I can't go outside. It's like house arrest. But I feel like I've committed a crime by getting foods that I know I have no business eating. And I hate it that this is what my life's become. I hate myself. I have a body that's 600 pounds. And as much as I've tried to fix it over the years, as many diets, every diet I've ever been on, have all failed miserably. Having to watch him gaining weight, it's just heartbreaking because there's nothing I can do or anyone else. If Michael doesn't change his eating habits, you know, we, we will lose him, you know? And so we're praying that he can do it because he is our light, and I don't want to lose him. I can't even imagine. I know I'm on a limited schedule. Every night I go to sleep thinking, if I die in my sleep, my wife's going to wake up and have 600 pounds of dead meat next to her. So I know I have to change now, because this is a ticking time bomb just waiting to take my life. Then once I cross that line where my body can't go on, then that'll be it. I won't make it, and then I'll lose everything. 
and I can't let that happen. He has support his wife, he has support uh, his children, and I think that is insensitive to do better for them. Guys, are you agree with me or you have a different opinion? Write me in the comments. But his story is so scary. Today I'm gonna go try to see Doctor now. Oh, it will be interesting. And I am not looking forward to it. Because I don't like going out in public. But I need to do this. So I'm gonna try and go get in the car and drive to Dr. Now's clinic. And mm -hmm. Kim's gonna go with me. So we have someone who's gonna watch the boys for a little while. But we should be back later on this evening because it's only about a 45 minute drive or so. Mm -hmm. It's time to go. I wish it wasn't. You ready, baby? Yeah. Okay. Get my shoes on. But I want help. So I'm gonna do this. I just hope I can do this. And it's not too overwhelming for me when I get out. You there. can do it. That doctor now says he can help me. Part of me is worried that he's gonna say I'm too far gone. You got your hat? Yeah. Go you boy hat. I'm just trying to keep my expectations low. So if that happens, I don't get let down. But I guess I'll just have to see how it goes. Today, I'm going with Michael to see Dr. Now, and I'm hoping that my husband will get his life back. But it's gonna be up to him, because as soon as Michael thinks that something won't work, he'll stop. But he needs to know that this is his chance, and if he doesn't take it, he's not gonna be here anymore. Yeah, yeah. Guess it's now or never. I'm just gonna try and focus on how this is a chance for me to save my life. Yeah. And by doing this, I'll hopefully be able to lose the weight and change my life. Oh, stupid door. The door get ya? Yeah. I believe in him. You got it. I told Kim that I want to try and drive. I know it's been a while. Almost two years, I think. But I know just having the wheel It'll help me feel a little bit more in control. And just knowing that I can turn around if I need to helps me keep going, as weird as it sounds. So how fast so is I'm just going to try to drive again, if I can handle being behind the wheel. There is there is nothing I can do. I can't perform the surgery on myself. No. So I just I want I need a yes or a no. Okay. So what happens if it's a yes? If Doctor Now says yes, I'm gonna try. It doesn't mean that he's gonna succeed. I've been cut open before. You know, with the promise of waking up anew. Let's think positively. Today is my judgment day. That's really the only way to put it. This is it. I love you, baby. I love you. We're almost the doctor now's. I'm just getting more nervous as we get closer. Because I'm scared this isn't going to go well. And that I'm not going to be able to get the help I need. That's my biggest fear, and it's overwhelming me even more now that we're almost there. Because I don't know how I'm going to handle it if Dr. Now says anything like that to me. Yeah, his wife says it's really a crazy support to him, and if not she, I think that um, he wouldn't uh, come to this, to this hospital. There's 
know it won't be good, but I'm doing my best to stay positive as much as I can. I think that you just need to have the mind frame that you need to have right now, okay? If, you, if all you can do is just hope for the next step, then that's where you need to be. You now have hope, which is something you've never had. You know, every other doctor has walked away from this. Why should I have any more hope now? Because this is his specialty. He does Good. hard cases. Well, okay, that's so awesome. that's hope. And I... that hope, that hope got us here right now today. Yes. Okay, but when I turn into this office, there's no more hope. The hope of getting here is done, complete. Now it's the gamble. Hope is dead from this point on. Never dies. This is our baby Never step. dies. Okay, you're here. So then we're going to go see the doctor, and yes. he's going to say yes. Okay. We will see. I hope Kim is right. And I hope this just goes well. I and hope so. all the stress that's on me right now, the thought of getting on a scale and seeing my weight isn't something I really want to do either. So I'm worried about that, too. It's been a really long time since I've gotten my weight checked. But I know I have to be at or over 600. There's no way that I'm still not over that benchmark. You know, I've lost a little weight here and there trying diets, but I've always just gained it right back. And then my weight goes back up, my clothes get tighter, so I know I'm gaining weight. I just hope I'm not going to see something like a 700 come up or anything close to that. If it's gotten to that point, it's going to be really hard for me to see and accept. Whatever the number is, or how high it's gotten. You okay? Uh, yeah. Okay. I know I only have myself to blame, but I'm trying to change that now because I'm here to lose weight and get to a better place and get that number down to where it should be. <laughs> Michael? How are you today? Okay. But I'm only going to be able to do that if I get the help that I've come here for. And if I don't, then I'll have nothing left, really. Go ahead. Thank you. Because I'll have no chance for a future. Make sure I'm not holding the wall or anything. So my whole life is dependent on... And what about his weight? See. Me and my wife are at Dr. Now's trying to get his help to lose weight. Hold on, no falling. And I'm about to find out how much help I actually need when the number on that scale comes up. And, oh, wow. <sighs> it's a lot. I'm both relieved and upset because my weight's not as high as I was afraid it could be. <sighs> but that's still a horrible number. You know, no human person should be at that weight. But that's what I have to change. And that's what I'm gonna change if Dr. Now is willing to give me a chance and take me on as a patient. Because he's the only hope I have left. She is so scared of him. Come in. Hello. Hello. How y'all doing? Good. I'm Dr. Jordan, and you are? Michael Blair. Michael Blair. And this young lady is? This is my wife, Kimberly. Well, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. So where are you coming from? Conroe. Conroe, oh. Texas. All right. So... Michael, uh, you're over 600 pounds, huh? Mm-hmm. And you're here to lose weight, right? Yes, sir. All right, so what led yes, you to sir. come here to get help with that today? Last chance. I, I've tried to contact doctors. I've contacted numerous surgeons because I've got extensive scar tissue. It's from my emergency splendectomy. So how and scary it is. no surgeon wants to cut in because they say that there's there's no hope. How much you weighed when you had that? Three eighty. 
Huh? I was 380 pounds. 380 pounds? Mm-hmm. Okay. So it looked like you have quite a situation. All this thing happened to you. Do you have a goal at this point? The only goal I have left is to find a surgeon that is willing and able to cut through my scar tissue and actually perform the surgery. Because I've tried every diet out there. Nothing has worked. So what seems to be the biggest challenge with your eating habit? It's the amount that it takes to sate me. It's like I can't just have, I can't just have one chicken breast. Yeah. And, you know, it's like if I have a bowl of rice, my bowl of rice can be two or three cups of rice at a time. Oh. So it's just empty carbs. Or it'll be pasta. It'll be a pound of pasta. Okay. If you say you eat healthy, but you just eat too much of it, then why can't you stop eating? I don't know. Yeah, portion size plays really big role in weight loss and um, people can eat right, but if he eats more uh, and every time, I mean every hour, it's not okay. Yeah? He obsessed with the food and uh, he needs portion control. That's the question. I can't stop because... That I, I said, I, he obsessed. At some point, I think maybe it became a defense mechanism because I was... I was so abused and, and tortured as a child, just in society. It's, I can't even, like, it's hard for me to go out. I, I have agoraphobia. So it's extremely hard for me to be out in public because I, I don't really like people. I hate society. So when, at what age did you decide that? I realized I didn't like people when I was about eight or nine. Once I realized that I was always going to be picked on. So, I so guys, you think I, I know I, it's just my opinion, maybe you don't agree with me, but I think that all people who is in this show, at the MN TV show, they need to go to the psychologist and solve this problem because all problems still in our head, yeah? And maybe he is obsessed of food, with food, yeah? Because he had a big, deep, big depression. He dest It destroys him all time, every day, yeah? Every every minute and of course he just eat 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 and to satiety yeah? and then he think oh i feel happy but it's not real happy yeah? it's really cheating part at any point did you have any therapy or see any i've had lots of therapy so with all these things not liking people having difficulty in it how in the world do you get such a supporting wife? How did you find that? <laughs> I met him. <laughs> <laughs> humor. I, I can hide my my I can hide my pain through humor. So, if you were today two hundred twenty pounds, do you think your outlook of you know, going with people will change? Oh, hundred percent. So the issue is the perspective you're adopting on things, where you make excuses and blame everyone for the reason you don't want to be around them. But this all comes down to your weight being the issue. So do you think you can make it some changes in your eating habit? Are you motivated to do that? I am 100% motivated. Well, you know, you're going to have to make some changes. Done. And done and done. bite the bullet and control your eating habit and it's going to be done. something that you're going to have to do to get to that point I'm done and done okay you know well uh here's what what i want you to do i'm going to set you to see a therapist mm -hmm. and see if they can help you get some of level of anxiety that you have down because you have built so many baggage in your life mm -hmm. at this point and you become so very opinionated about where you are and how the world is, maybe we can change that, okay? I hope. So this is going to be something that's important to do. Okay. Because your perspective on things needs to improve for you to have any chance to do this for the long run. But we got a lot of work to do to get yeah. to the point that uh, will be even feasible to try and see if there is a possibility to do any kind of surgery on you. So, uh, the first thing is going to be that you need to start losing weight now. So, we're going to try to change your eating habit. 
and see if we can get some discipline in what you're eating and try to get weight down. And then I'm going to set you up to have some tests and do endoscopy and weight loss surgery. But you have a food comfort. So everything that you see that is dark in front of you when you eat can get a little bit better. Yeah. So that food comfort is going to be an issue because even if we do weight loss surgery, how are you going to deal with those things? Yeah. If you don't learn to deal with that in a healthy way, you still go back to food and undo the surgery, it will be pointless in the long run. And that's uh-huh. going to be a, a significant issue that we need to work out, yes. okay? So you're going to do some blood tests on you today, but I'm going to set you up to have some more tests done on your heart and your lung and examine your scar tissue and what's going on in your abdomen and see what is the ability for you to have any kind of surgery down the road. Okay. But uh, this is something that I want you to focus on changing your life at this point. You're going to have to try hard and follow the instruction and uh, be more proactive for your health. And this is the only way we can get you out of this situation. Yeah. Okay? Okay. And I had gastric bypass 15 years ago, and mm. so I will be whatever you need for support-wise for him. Well, that's good. But so far, whatever his environment is, he's still able to get what he wants and overeat. So that unhealthy support system needs to change. Okay. Uh, so the diet is going to limit the amount to eat in a day to 1,200 calories. But a focus on protein and avoiding almost all carbs. Okay. And I want your focus to be on losing as much weight as you can right now and getting your stamina. But I'm not going to give you a specific goal until we do the endoscopy, okay? Okay. But all those things is going to be all up to you at this okay. point. I want you to forget about what the past is and look forward to future. So this is a new day. You're going to start a new way of eating, a new way of exercising and changing everything. we got a lot of work to do. Yeah. We're willing to do it. You tell us what to do and we'll do it. All right, so I'm going to bring you some instructions. Guys, you know, I see on behavior his wife, and um, she's really like a small son in his life. Uh, she really wants him to lose weight and have him undergo surgery. It is so important to herself and to their life that I mentioned. Then we'll set up an appointment for you to go to therapy. Okay. So just try to change the course of the life that you have right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If he's so able to change that, will you think, I mean, is it possible, do you think, to attempt the surgery if well, all the tests say? I, from what Michael said, most likely we're going to face a lot of scar tissue and a lot of issues. So we have to look at that issue first to see what's possible and if weight loss surgery can be done or not. So if everything looks good and he loses weight, we can try doing surgery on him. Okay? Okay. I got your yes. It's a possible. As I said before, she's but like small Sonny in his yeah, life. Um, depending if it's, okay. it's safe to have surgery. Yeah. Okay, but you have to bite the bullet and do the hard work. Fine, done and done. At the meantime, we're going to see if we can draw some blood. I'll give you some instruction about your diet and... Uh, but nobody says that it will be uh, really easy. Nobody. Of course, it's, it's a hard work. It's hard, complicated work. Exercise. All right, let me see if we can draw some blood on you. Thank you. Okay. All right. I'll be back. Okay. Thank you. We obviously have a lot of issues we need to address with Michael to get him on the right track with his overall health, especially with his mentality and perspective. He seems to have a lot of negative views on things and people that is leading to a lot Mm. of anxiety with him. So starting him going to psychotherapy right now will be important to help him start to work on that. But the big question seems to be what the situation is in his abdomen with the scar tissue that prevented his previous attempt at weight loss surgery. So we need to run some tests to determine that because if weight loss surgery isn't a possibility for him, we will have to adapt the program and how we approach giving Michael the tools he needs to get healthy because it's very important he start to lose a lot of weight before he develops any more health issues.
right, though? Right. Oh, okay. I'm here at the therapist's place. The doctor now wanted me to start therapy, and I'm all for it. Because I think I can greatly benefit from it. And I'm hoping this session will be a new start for me. Thank you. Hi there, I'm Dr. Paradise. Come Hi, on, guys. Nice to meet you. Paradise. Nice to meet you. You guys can have a seat right over there. But I'm a little nervous to talk to somebody new. Mm -hmm. So I want Kim in the session with me. Right here. Baby. They're so okay. close to each other. Good. Oh. Careful. Whew. So welcome. Thank you. So Michael and Kim. So Michael, tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, where would you? That's a hard question. I really don't uh, know. The basic stuff like, uh, what was your childhood like? Any major experiences? Major experiences when I was, my mom wanted me to, to always be a part of something. Okay. She put me into a camping troop you know, boy type stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we went on a, a weekend camping trip. Camp leader liked to uh, indulge in young boys, liked to have wow. us get naked and, and go down waterfalls and wrestle each other and wrestle him. And How old were you? About 10 or 11. Okay, what, what effect do you think that had on you going through that? It, that? I think that's when I started really hating people in general. But he, he sort of, what? Trash. What the fucked up? I wonder why other students didn't write a statement that he undresses them and uh, he makes them do something like that. Uh, I'm shocked. It made you suspicious of uh... every type of person, every adult, everyone who could have authority. I never wanted to do any event mm -hmm. with other children. Right. I never I never wanted to be away from my home. So it trapped you. Basically, he he yes, his action erected a cage around me that I can't escape from. You're trapped now. Yeah. I'm still trapped because I don't like going out. Like I'll go out to drive Kim to a store, but I don't go in stores because I don't like people. So, um Stores are a big deal for you? You don't like them? No. So can you think of a safe store for you? Where, where's a store that you would feel comfortable? Somewhere where there wasn't a lot of people. Okay. Yeah. But would it be a store that had something that you liked or were interested in or? It would okay. have, yeah. Like probably anything where I could get some spiritual supplies. Okay, yeah. So like something with the crystals or exactly. something like yeah. that. And getting you out of the house is going to be slow, incremental steps. Yeah. So okay. I, I want to find a way for you to communicate with that group leader. He's dead now. Okay. So you, you can't talk to him directly. It might be something like a letter, and the letter might say something like, you know, you've kept me down too long, and I'm done with that. Because that guy can't hurt you anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's gone, right? So mm -hmm. interesting idea. And then what do you do with that letter? Burn it. And the act of burning it is symbolic, right? It's about giving you power over the things yeah. that had power over you previously, right? Claim your power, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, great to meet you guys. Thanks yeah. for coming in. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Have a safe drive back up. So there. nice to call it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed meeting Michael. He's super smart. And I think that um, that's going to be an asset to him. But I think, unfortunately, he's used his intelligence to create a lot of barriers to his current function. He can convince anybody why he shouldn't be able to do something, including himself. And that's potentially dangerous for him. I don't want him being smart enough to convince everyone to have low expectations of him. So good to meet you. I think that he's holding on to a lot of stuff that's keeping him from moving forward in his future. And one of his big tasks is going to be to let go of some of that. I think this helped me a whole lot, you know? I think it went great. It was emotional, but I needed this. And I really like Dr. Paradise. I think he has some great insight for me. He's given me some great direction and things to do to help me work on some issues. So I'm going to do them as soon as I'm able. But this was a good start. I really think it's going to help me a lot. You know, it won't be easy, but I'm ready to do this. 
because I'm ready to turn my life around. Can you grab my chair, please? After seeing Dr. Now in Dr. Paradise, I was feeling really good about things. Mm -hmm. And I'm ready to make some big changes in my life. You're good. And to get rid of the things that have been holding me back and dragging me down. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to do a purge today, where I take all the bad food in this house and burn it down. Finally. You know, doing that is long overdue. So I am ready for this purge. Can I throw something in? Of course. You can dump that out. Is that plastic? You have you to pull them out. The plastic pull them out and burn them. It's okay. And it burns. You should throw this for me away, Dad. It's hard watching some of this food burn. Instead of, you know, using it. It's like watching my comfort just to center, right? But now it forces me to find other ways to get that comfort because it can't be food anymore. I think it is the best and the right decision ever. So not only food should comfort a person, yes, yeah, there are others uh, joys in life. For example, uh, his future work or his wife or his children, the car, sport activity, but not only food. Guys, and what do you think about his idea? Would you do the same or not? Not if I want to live. And that's what I want above all else. Tomorrow I'm going to go to the hospital and Dr. Now is going to do yeah. my endoscopy. And the yeah. test he needs to see if it's even possible for me to have weight loss surgery. Because I'm going to find out if I have a future or not. And if the answer is that nothing can be done and Dr. Now tells me that, then it's going to devastate me completely. Because this is my last and final hope. Absolutely. It's all burning away. Good. And the fire will rise again. So we smoke before fire. Mm -hmm. You got this. Okay? Mm -hmm. So what kind of salad are you thinking for dinner? I'll be in in a minute, okay? Okay. I'm here at the hospital for my endoscopy and testing to see if weight loss surgery is possible for me. And I'm extremely nervous. I'm usually numb, so I don't get my hopes up. But I know this. Right here, right now, is my last and only chance of having a life. At having a future. Normal future. Today we are going to do an endoscopy in Michael to try and determine if weight loss surgery is even a possibility for him. So we'll be putting a small camera down into his stomach to see how everything looks and determine if there be any issues that would prevent us from performing the surgery like gastric sleeve or gastric bypass on him. Normally, this wouldn't be done until the patient qualifies for surgery. But in Michael's case, I have concerns about some of his medical history since he was considered for weight loss surgery when he was in the 300s, but ultimately denied because of excessive scar tissue in his abdomen preventing it. Hey, Michael. Hello. How are you? I'm already worried about him. I hope he approves this operation and he deserves for normal life, for better lives than now. Yeah. Good. A little anxious. More so than normal. But good. All right. So today we're going to go look down in your stomach and okay. see how things are and see if there is any even His possibility eyes. to consider any kind of weight loss surgery. But the <laughs> main concern is that you have this scar tissue uh, from old surgery. Yeah. And um, in the upper abdomen, you still have that hernia. Yeah. So we may have to get that 
treated because they can feel your bowel is under the skin right here. Mm -hmm. uh, normally we do this um, endoscopy when everybody's approved for surgery, but yeah. in your case, we're gonna do it now to see how the things are. Okay. And what potential we've got, okay? All right. All right, so we'll go ahead and do that in a few minutes. Okay. And then I'll let you know what will be next step. Great, thanks so much, doctor, I appreciate it. All right. With Michael's scar tissue, I also have some concerns about what looks to be a severe hernia around in Michael's abdomen, because that may be an issue preventing the possibility of weight loss surgery as well. So if any of those issues are present, to the degree that weight loss surgery isn't an option for Michael, then there is no point putting him on a program toward, toward that. And we will need to come up with a different plan for him to get his weight under control. But that all depends on what we learn from this endoscopy. Everybody, good night. I'm mm -hmm. okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, you can get the light. So now we can see. Okay. Is possible or impossible? Impossible. And he does have a height of honey, yeah? I'm worried. Well, a lot of bile in his esophagus. That's a little bit unusual. That may indicate that scar tissue down the road blocking the valve. That's a big stomach. <laughs> Unfortunately, but I'm not a doctor and uh, I don't understand this small picture yet and what it means, but I'm waiting for the answer. Okay, so we can remove the endoscope. All right, they are done. The light. Michael, we're all done. Michael looks to have a very complicated situation in his abdomen. It looks like he does have a significant amount of scar tissue that is going to be an issue if we attempted to do weight loss surgery on him because it will prevent us from maneuvering the instruments how we need and from making certain incisions internally that will be required for the operation. And Michael also has a severe hernia where his stomach muscles are torn. And that with the scar tissue is going to prevent us from performing weight loss surgery on him. But what we may be able to do is attempt a hernia repair on him and use that as an opportunity to try to move as much of the scar tissue as we can. And then if we are able to do that, see if all that is enough to resolve the issue so we can perform weight loss surgery on him. But that's all theoretical and we won't know if that's the case until we attempt to do that. So the first step towards any possible solution for Michael is going to have to be for him to potentially lose at least 150 to 200 pounds before we will be able to determine if any sort of operation in his abdomen area is possible for him and what options we may have for him long term. Hey, Michael. Hey, you waking up? I am, I am. All right, uh, so yeah, endoscopy, um, I'm sure you have some higher hernia. The bad news is that weight loss surgery may not be an option with all the scar tissue and the hernia you have. Okay. But the good news is we may be able to fix that and take the scar tissue down and fix the hernia. Okay. Uh -huh. And then once we do that, then we will have opportunity to make weight loss surgery possible for you. Okay. But before any of this is possible, you need to lose 150 to 200 pounds to reduce the stress that your weight is putting in your whole system, but also around your abdomen, okay? Because right now, your body you wouldn't be able to handle an operation. And we won't be able to maneuver any instrument in your abdomen safely to do the operation. Do you think you can do that? 
it's just it's going to be hard. So. Well, nobody said it's going to be easy. Uh, that's your yeah. All right. Yeah, I just uh, I just but, didn't quite think that hard. That's all. I was, but if you want to change your life, you're going to have to work hard. Yeah. So stick with the diet, increase your activity, <laughs> and we'll set another appointment with Dr. Paradise so you can keep working on things with him. Okay. You think you can do that? I know I can. I have no choice. I have to. Great. We'll get you there. <laughs> All right. I appreciate it. Okay. So I'm going to adapt your weight loss goal to 100 pounds over three months, okay? I'll try. Okay. Work toward that goal. And once you get down 150 pounds, we'll check on you again and see how close you're getting to where we can safely do hernia surgery. Okay. Okay. I'll see you soon. And if you need anything, give me a call. I will. Thank you. Have a good one, Doc. But there is a chance, and the most important thing is uh, lose weight and and feeling uh, in your body. For now, we need to focus Michael on adapting to healthier eating habits and to helping him sustain that for as long as possible. Without weight loss surgery, that's going to be very difficult for him to do for the long term. But at this point, we don't know if weight loss surgery will ever be an option for him. And hernia repair and scar tissue removal won't even be an option until he loses a good amount of weight. So we are going to have to take the more difficult road with Michael to lose a significant amount of weight without weight loss surgery, so we will do what we can to help him with that. But if he continue to justify his unhealthy eating, then there will be no option to help him turn his situation around before he runs out of time. Second month, mm hmm. Today I'm doing another purge. And I'm writing the letter that Dr. Paradise talked about in therapy. And then to burn oh. it, to let some of those it things from difficult. my childhood go. I don't want to keep letting anything hold me back. Do some homework. Okay. Is it going to disturb you if I'm in here for a little bit? No, here you good. Feed the frogs and then I'm going to go to my room and take a nap. Okay, baby. I'm guessing this is going to take a lot of emotion and feelings that honestly, I don't think I've ever fully processed. I've just kept it all inside and to myself because I was scared. And I just had no one I felt I could talk to about it. I realize how how difficult it is. finished what I wanted to get out and put in the letter. But it has been emotionally draining for me to do. But I knew it would be. Oh, you feel like staying out here for this hatred? You know what? I think that you need someone just to say it to. <sighs> Dear you, you know who you are. You tormented me. You found pleasure in the bodies of young boys. You forced me to see the horror this world is capable of. You have done your damage and left your mark. Now, you are banished to the flames. I will never forget you. So I think it will help him and he will go of his pain, he will let go of his pain. 
guys and have you ever done something like else uh, did you write a letter and then burn it i did let's go in baby okay leave the chair until tomorrow yeah we'll get it all later No, oh, first month. Mm. It's time for my second appointment with Dr. Now, and I'm nervous because right now we had an arrangement for someone to pick up the kids after school and then to watch them for a bit so Kim could be here with me because I don't like going out in public much. Mm -hmm. But that fell through, so she had to do it. So my options are to skip it or to try to get there on my own. And I don't think it'd be a good idea if I skipped it. So I'm gonna go out on my own for the first time in a long while. I can't even remember the last time I went out on my own. It's just been a long time, so I am extremely nervous and apprehensive about doing this. But I'm still going, because I desperately need help. And I need the surgeries that Dr. Now thinks he can do. And I don't want to mess my chances of any of that up. And so the fear of losing my chance is outweighing my agoraphobia. So my one fear is helping me defeat my other fear, I guess. But whatever it takes to motivate me to do this, even without Kim, my wife has always been my biggest support. And when she's with me, I know I have somebody that has my back, no matter what. So doing this without her is scary. And it's gonna be hard to hear the news without her, good or bad, whatever it is, you know? If it's bad, I need her support. If it's good, She's the only one I can't wait to share it with. So this definitely makes it harder. But I'm a little proud of myself for doing it. This is a big step for me, so that's something. But all I really care about right now is if I hit that goal or not. It's really a new step into his life. I've almost made it there, and I'm just really nervous. My big fear is that I didn't hit my goal. Mm -hmm. I know I've lost. I know there's been progress. I've worked hard on myself, physically, mentally, and emotionally, for just about three solid months. But in the end, it comes down to my weight. And I don't know how much progress I've made with that, and if it's enough. So there's still that fear, because if it's not enough, I'm afraid Dr. Now will think that surgery will never be a possibility for me, that he's gonna think that I'm not committed enough. So the option for any surgery is gonna be taken off the table, and that's it. It'll turn out just like I was afraid it would from the beginning, with another shattered dream on the floor for me. But I'm trying to stay as positive as I can right now and not focus on any negative. Yeah. But it's hard without Kim. She helps center me. So I'm just struggling because of how much is going to be determined by the number on the scale. You know, it's impossible not to fixate on it and worry because either I hit my goal and that's good, because I can move ahead in some fashion, or I didn't. And if I didn't, there's a very real chance that I'm gonna to be told that'll never happen. Michael? That I'm not getting surgery, because it'll be physically impossible. How are you today? So it feels like every single thing in my life, my whole life is on the poker table. Man. And whether I keep it or not, Depends on the hand the scales about the deal. Now we can see it. Whenever you're ready. Minus. Minus and 20. I'm just terrified that I could be about to lose everything. And and and. That's progress. Wow. It's good progress. Wow. But not a hundred pounds of progress. I know it's not from lack of effort because How I'm really trying. How strong is he? Yeah. Kim would say that too if she was here because she sees me pushing myself to stick to the diet and to do all the things I need to do. And she's right there with me, doing it too. So I was hoping it was more, but it's still a lot of weight loss. But I'm still worried, because I don't know if it's enough or not. And what Dr. Now's view is gonna be, or about my chances of moving ahead now with this. My hey, favorite Michael, doctor. How you doing? Good, really good. So where is your wife today? 
She is actually home with the kids, and I'm trying to be more independent and go out without her. That's good progress, don't you, Dean? I'm feeling good about it. Feeling oh, bad. yeah. All right, that's good. You made good progress with your weight loss, too. Yeah, I've been following your diet. I've been tempted to cheat, but I haven't. I've stayed on it, straight and narrow. Been doing my exercises. So I'm, I'm feeling good, feeling strong. Okay, uh, but you have to work hard because uh, you should have lost more than 61 pounds in three months. Uh, mm -hmm. That's about uh, 20 pounds a month. Yeah. And if you cut back to 1,200 calories, then you would have lost almost four times that. Okay. So you're making some good changes, but you need to do more to cut back on your portions. Yeah, I got it. I understand. I'm only going to have 1,200 calories. All right, that's great. Uh, do you have any questions? Okay, so, so bottom line, what do I have to do to get to surgery? If you get close to losing at least 150 pounds overall, then we can check again and see if there is enough pressure off your abdomen to do any surgery. So that's a goal for you. I'll give you another three months to lose another 90 pounds. But it's going to get even harder the longer you try to do this. So it's important you stay focused. Yeah, because the more weight I lose, the harder it is to get off weight. I, I got you. Okay. So 90 and 3, right? Yes. All right, Malcolm. Any other questions? No, I'm, I'm good. Okay, so we're going to schedule you to keep going to therapy. Did you enjoy that last time? Yeah, thank you so much for, for getting me in contact with Dr. Paradise. It's been tremendous. So thank you so much for getting me in contact with him. Okay, so keep doing that and working on things. Keep doing that, Michael. And if you need Michael. anything before the next appointment, give me a call. Okay. All right, you take care. Thank you, doctor. All right. Have a great day. You too. I'm happy to see some improvement with Michael and to hear that he thinks therapy too. is helping him out some way now. But his progress so far is just a drop in the bucket of what he needs to do. So there is still a lot of work ahead for Michael. And the big question is if he's going to be able to stick with it over the period of time he needs. Because losing his wound like weight loss surgery is only going to increase the likelihood he's going to have a weak moment at some point and go off the rails. But hopefully, continuing with therapy helps him to look ahead. But Michael still has a long road ahead, and the outcome is ultimately still all up to him and the choices he makes. So only time will tell. All in all, I'm feeling good about how it went. It could have gone better, but it could have gone a lot worse. So, I was so he still needs to work and lose his weight and put foot on the fourth or fifth place in his head because uh, on first place, yeah, must be his family, his children, his wife and his real life, life without this deity, lives with feelings like real persons as that he can walk on the street without any pain. Yeah? And I think he deserves on it and he can handle it. Very worried for a moment about which direction it was going to take. But I'm happy the doctor now was pleased. And I was very relieved when he said some of the encouraging things that Yahoo. he did. And I know Kim is going to be happy to hear that too when I share it with her. You know, I wish my goal for next time wasn't still as big. And all I have to do is go back and try to improve on what I did last time. And I think I can do that. Yeah. So that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. The worst that can happen with agoraphobia, though. The worst that can happen is this can be completely counterproductive. Okay. And actually push me farther away from wanting to leave the house at all. Do you think that's really a reality? Yeah, I do. I do. I do. And you're allowed to feel that way. I'm not trying to. No, disconnect. you are. You're. You're telling no. me. You're. You're. Again, I love that you're always perky and always happy and always telling me what's going to be best for me, but it happens. It goes sideways. So it sounds like right now you're spiraling a little bit. I am completely spiraling. So okay. let's just... Do let's, you need me to be I, quiet please, for just a little bit? Please. Okay. I need you to breathe, though, because you're starting to panic, Michael. Here. Mm -mm. Do you need me to drive? 
Nope. Okay. You know, I, I can't fit right in the car anywhere else. You but can. Yeah. I need you to breathe. And ground yourself for me. Right now, Kim and I are trying to find a crystal shop, working on my agoraphobia. My fear of going out and being around people. This isn't easy. And right now, I'm not even sure I'm going to be able to go through with it. Oh, it's cute. <laughs> yeah. Look how cute that is. I don't know. Okay. Take all the time you need. When you're ready, we'll go. Yes, I sure can. Good evening. Good evening. How are you today? Pretty good. Yourself? Oh, I'm wonderful. Thank you. Ah, it's rock shop. Wow. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh my god, this I think it is all. The quartz crystals made in Conroe in the mid 70s. Really? They uh -huh. supplied the entire world for uh, quartz crystal power for CB radios. It's right here. That's in awesome. Conroe. I built my shop from whatever I could scrounge as cheaply as possible. That sounds like familiar. Can <laughs> you leave these up here for you? Okay, those are the ones you want? Yeah. We'll unlock it for you, baby. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. I'm proud of you, Michael. I hear you. Thank you. I am so proud I did that. It's been 15 years since he's been in public like this. But I'm also glad it's over. But I'll keep doing stuff like this and taking all the steps I need. And hopefully, the next time I go back to Doctor Now, it'll pay off. once you have that weight off? Yeah. I mean, you've already lost an amazing amount. Me and Kim have been sticking to the diet, but it's been harder to find healthy options that we both enjoy. You can eat healthy and have it be good, you know, and filling and tasty. It's almost like it's refining my palate more, too. Oh, I like that. Mm. That's exactly what I needed. Oh, good, I'm glad. You know, we've had more failures than successes with finding meals that we like. But to be honest about it, I really miss fried food. I'm not gonna get any, but I do miss it. It's just a process, but we're committed to it for a lifetime to make sure that I can live a healthy life. But it's hard. It's just hard. But it's paying off. Of course, the dependence of food remains because he ate junky food for a long time. And of course, now it's so hard to him. But it's, you know, when you ate a lot time, a long time, just junky food, I mean a lot of gumbers, a lot of fried uh, potatoes, yeah, um, to give up in one day, uh, it's so hard, yeah, but he is strong, he is powerful, let it continue in the same spirit. <laughs> because I can see it in a lot of ways and in a lot of places. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah? That was very good, thank you so much. You're welcome, my pleasure. You normally cook for me dinner, so it's nice that I could do that for you. Well, I, I'm gonna go hit the bathroom. Okay. I love you. Oh. I know, baby. I'm sorry. <clears throat> it will get better, Michael. I promise. Doing this is all so much harder than I thought. Not just the diet and the exercising, but the mental and emotional work, too. That's even harder because of the depths that I have to go to do it, and then to keep doing it. To face my past and what's hurt me, and to face the negativity that I have about myself. One new homework assignment from Dr. Paradise is to look myself in the mirror and see all the things I have to get past. The feelings I have to face about myself, to let it out, to stop believing all the lies that I've been told and I believed about myself. And that's been hard for me. This is so much harder than I ever could have imagined. I just hope it all helps me to keep improving and make progress. Because if it's not, it is a lot to put myself through for having nothing to show for it. 
matches my effort what waste because i'm just going through the ringer with all of this and i need it to pay off all of this has to be for something so i just need it to start paying off for me and soon because i don't want to get discouraged because this is just so much harder than i even thought it would be pull yourself together come on Months. Oh, 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 so fast. Kim and I are back at Dr. Now's for my next appointment and to find out if I made the progress I was supposed to make. But I am nervous. <laughs> of course. I've been struggling a lot, and that led me to take an extra month coming back here. Dr. Mm, now gave I me don't a think that he goal, has extra months. And bonds. I took four because it's gotten a lot harder to do this. So I just wanted a little more time to lose more. Michael, para pa pa pa. Now we can see. And get closer to my goal, but I don't even know if it helped or was enough to get me there. I know I'm trying hard, as hard mm -hmm. as I can, but all I can say is it's just getting harder and harder to do this. So I'm just hoping and praying that I'm at least in the ballpark of where I need, because if I'm not, I don't know how much of a grace period Doctor Now is going to give me. much to say other than I'm disappointed very disappointed because he I didn't more. lose more it's still loss and that's good overall that's about a hundred pounds I've taken off my body so maybe doctor now will see the total and even consider moving me ahead with the testing I just thought the progress I was gonna have today would be better so I'm upset and I'm worried about what doctor now is ultimately gonna tell me Hello, how y'all doing? It's okay. Good. Good. Uh, Michael, so you took four months this time, but lost half of what you did the first time. So what's going on? I think it's just like you said, Doctor. Now, you know, the more weight you lose, the harder it is to lose. Portion control is still a problem. I got lots of excuses, but it doesn't matter. Good. Well, it's understandable. That's getting harder for you over this amount of time. But the fact is still that you have to lose enough weight to take the pressure off your abdomen so the surgery will be possible. So you don't think 100 pounds is close enough to do the endoscopy? No. Okay. You need to get closer to losing 150 pounds before we're ready to do that. Maybe next time if you stick with it and get back on track, okay? Mm-hmm. You still doing therapy and sticking with it? 100%. I'm gonna keep working on my perspective and improving myself. It's just mm -hmm. been harder the past few months, but I'm trying and I'm not giving up. That means I've lost about 100 pounds, so I'm just gonna keep working on it and try to do better until you tell me I'm done and I'm ready for surgery. Okay, great. So all you can do at the end of the day is try harder and work at it, okay? That's what I'm gonna do. All right, so we make sure your next therapy appointment is set. So you have that. I don't want you to lose the same goal as last time, 90 pounds. But I give you up to four months to do that. But if you think you have done that sooner, then give me a call to set up your appointment. And we will do it then. Sounds good? Okay, doctor. Thank you. Just pick out the pace some so you lose more than 10 pounds a month. Okay? 100 pounds is good, but you got to keep going. I will, doctor, now. Okay? So you both keep at it. Work hard, and if you need anything, give me a call. We will. See y'all later. All right. Have a good All day. right. Bye now. Bye. Bye. It is certainly concerning to see the trend with Michael's weight loss slowing. He's gonna have to work harder. Yeah, all those who are losing weight are looking uh, for an excuse or some justification. Yeah, why it didn't work out? But this is self-deception. Yeah. Mm. 
all all in our heads guys and do you agree with my opinion write me in comments if he wants to succeed at this because losing more weight is the only option he has to move forward so these yeah. next few months are a crossroads moment for him because if this pattern continues with him then he's gonna stop losing and start gaining again and once that happens we likely won't be able to get him back on track Next month. I've been feeling good about my recent progress and how well I'm doing. Uh huh. You know, I feel like I've been doing better over these last couple of months. Kim and I have gone out five more times to public places. That's huge, you know. So I'm making progress with my agoraphobia, and with that progress, it's real progress. I started to feel some of my confidence come back, just ah. a little, not a lot. Congratulations. But a little, it's just enough to make me think I can get back to something step I love. Step after you know, step. My martial arts. What is this? Uh huh, some sport shop? Or what is it? How you doing? Good. And you're? Michael. Michael. Nice to meet you, Michael. Nice to meet you. Okay, you've had a, a little training before. Yes. That's terrific. Super. How long has it been since you trained? Ah, she years. tries to years. do activity. Yeah. Okay. Well, believe it or not, it's still going to be some, some back in there. So let's go on the mat, and we'll get you going a little bit, and you're going to get to where you want to get. OK. So guys, it's a real progress. I'm scared this isn't gonna go well. Because I'm feeling good about myself right now. I don't wanna do anything to mess that up. So I can just imagine how many fear he had inside. Oh. But I'm pushing past all those fears in my head and the negativity. And I'm gonna to try to just focus on the positive. Yeah, just fight. And that I can even try fight to do this right now. Fight all your pain. And that alone is amazing to me. And to have a chance to get back to martial arts and have that discipline in my life that I have lacked for way too long. It's a huge thing for me that I want. And I'm thankful for it. My goal is to be able to push myself to drill for a minute at least, just to start again. This is hard. I'm exhausted, but I'm I'm exhilarated by that exhaustion. And then it pushes me to go on for five or ten more seconds. The final goal for me is getting to that minute right now. And I have to do it little by little. I take a break. I recenter myself. I gain my composure. I gain my, my breath. And I go back at it. And even if it's only for a few seconds, each time I know I'm going to get better. I know I'm going to do more each time I try it. I just have to keep at it and not allow myself to fall back. Looking pretty good there, Mr. Michael. <sighs> Thank you. I was watching you through the window. You were doing some, some nice stuff. Good reach hands, nice palm heel strikes. When you're punching, your wrist is nice and straight like it's supposed to be. And if sitting down is what you need to do, then yeah. that's what you do, okay? okay? But you've got good rich hands. You were ready striking in there with those two big knuckles, coming in with rich hands, palm strike, palm strikes in there. That's a lot of energy. One of the most important things in, in martial arts is that how you think is going to determine whether you're successful at whatever it is that you're doing. And physically now, to get to where you want to get, you have to do it in little pieces. When you're gonna get started? How about, how about some 15 seconds shots right now? Uh-huh. And time's starting, go. I feel great. I'm really happy I did this. You know, I pushed myself today to take this leap and get out of my comfort zone and get back to martial arts because stepping onto the mats again after 20 years of not being on the mats was extremely Extremely cathartic. All right, let's see what's gonna happen for these 60 seconds. Don't forget, take those breaks in there and pace yourself. Ready? Ready? And begin. 
That's it. This has encouraged me and given me a fire to work even harder and to keep doing this because martial arts is a place where I find peace. I he starts to change his life and I can say that, wow, it's really, wow, because, you know, guys, it's so difficult to start, like, your life one more time and one more, t one more time. And, of course, when he's fat and he's fat, it's, it's <laughs> how many powerful he must need to, to start it. Wow. Nice result. Find balance. I find my center. And it's, it's where I need to be. Because martial arts is going to help me find myself again. Yeah. I felt like a husk of a person for too long. And this will help me build my body and inner self back. Two, one, time. Okay, whenever you're ready, we're ready for you. All right? All right. There you are. Here's your homework. Thank you very much. You are very welcome. I am feeling great after this lesson. I'm walking out of here confident. I'm walking out of here with tools I can use. I'm walking out of here just with a rekindled sense of purpose. So this is gonna help me keep going and discipline myself in all areas of my life. <laughs> so I'm not gonna fail. I have two more months You're to try not. to hit my goal and get surgery. And I intend to do it. Once, mm -hmm. now he came to Houston, he comes to Houston. Kimberly and I are about to be at Dr. Now's for another appointment. And I'm hoping the doctor now says that I'm ready to move ahead with my testing mm -hmm. to see if I can have surgery now, because I feel like I am. Dr. Now gave me four months to lose my goal, adding an extra month for me from what he's been giving, because I took that last time. But he also told me if I feel ready sooner than that, I could come back before then. So I called him and told him I feel good about what I've been doing. Uh -huh. And that I want to come back this month because I think I'm ready. And I do not want to lose more and time. And now we can see. Are you ready or not? Michael? So I just hope I'm right and I did it. But I'm feeling good about my chances. Mm -hmm. At my last appointment, I was at 512 pounds. And Dr. Now wanted me to lose 90 pounds again. So my goal for today is 422. And I'm about to see if I did that. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> All because of you, babe. Mm -hmm. I knew you could do it. I love you. I love you. I knew you could do it. It's more than I lost last time. So I'm happy about that. I guess the big question is the same as it's always been. Mm -hmm. Is it enough? I hope it is. You know, I'm close to that 150 pound overall goal that doctor now gave me to do another endoscopy. So I'm yeah, he finally did it. How it's uh, how it's necessary to have support of loved us, what loved ones. Oh, well. Holding out hope that in total, my progress up to this point will be enough for him to say I'm ready for that and to yeah. move ahead. Hello, oh, my favorite doctor is doctors. Hey, Thank you. Good. All right, so Michael, so you're back a little early. Yes, sir. Okay, but you didn't lose a lot more weight than last time. I know. I thought I lost more. So I'm glad to see you're maintaining it, so that's positive. And overall, up to this morning, you have lost about 135 pounds. So I think that's close enough to what you need to lose for us to go ahead. We do an endoscopy, see if it's going to be possible to fix the hernia and do um, preparation for weight loss surgery. That sounds good? That sounds incredible. <laughs> yes, thank you. Yes. All right, so we'll set that up for you and then see what our options are from there. Do you think surgery is going to be possible or even likely at this point? I don't know. We just have to see. But if it is, then we'll schedule your honey repair. And once you recover from that, we can see if the scar tissue is still posing any obstacle to doing your weight loss surgery. So it may take a little while to get to that point. But if you just stay on track and don't get too comfortable to where you start to gain, we'll figure it out, okay? 100%, I'm not gonna let that happen. I am excited. Thank you, thank you, thank you, doctor. Well, you're welcome. 
I'm proud of you for sticking with it this long. So keep it up. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'll speak to both of you soon and see you at the endoscopy. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. See y'all later. Bye. Bye, Bye Thank doctor. You, doctor. Well, I'm proud of Michael for consistently losing weight like he has. It would be nice to see more progress from him, but trying to stay on track for as long as he has is going to be a struggle. So I'm happy to see he at least stuck with it and worked hard to do that, and that his family is supporting him to help him stay on track. So we'll see how things are looking in his abdomen and determine if he's ready for his first surgery and go from there. But Michael still has a long road ahead to get healthy and make it to his target weight. But I'm confident we'll be able to get him in for his hernia surgery soon. And if everything goes well, we can attempt his weight loss surgery six to eight weeks after that, once he recovered enough. So we'll see if we can do that. So I can say that the new life starts and it is a really incredible feeling. But whatever the situation is, Right now, I'm very optimistic about Michael's potential to turn his life around to get healthy and stick with it for the long run. I am extremely excited right now and very proud of myself. When Dr. Now said I was ready and he was gonna do the endoscopy and test again, it's like this huge weight was lifted off me. It has been a long journey and a lot of hard work. And to see it start to pay off makes me feel incredible. So I'll just wait to get my date and time to go to the hospital for it all. And then we'll go from there. But right now, I'm looking forward to hopefully moving ahead soon. Well, it's months. Mm -hmm. I am excited about today because my sons and I planned a surprise picnic for Kim. We're oh, to get some flowers for him wow. and we'll get some, some lunch. Oh, she loves pink roses pink lilies but yes i told her that I, I would pick the kids up from school and that she should just take it easy and that we have but he said before in the beginning of our story he said that he has uh, come around or walking out yeah with his um, uh, children but now all is changed you big surprise for her hey beautiful can you and xander come out okay, love, you, love you bye and we all they pick the spot by the lake you. to make a it's fun so and special day for Kim, to show her just how special she is. And we are all excited about it. Kimberly has no idea what's going on. It was my idea because I was trying to think of ways that I could start to help out with all of the things that Kim has to do Whoa. and take care of and manage. <gasps> Give me your oh. hands. Okay, look down, look down. Open your eyes, there's a curb. Hey, just look at the ground. Keep your eyes closed at the ground. Ah, oh, it's a surprise. You know, doing this is just a fraction of what she's done for me. But it's something. It's a step towards doing the things she deserves and what I've always wanted to do for her for decades. And I think she's going to like it a lot. I hope she does. Take a few more steps. Okay. Okay. Keep your eyes closed. Okay. Ready? Ready? Surprise. <gasps> oh my gosh, honey. Balloons. Thank you, honey. Mm -hmm. I love my koala. <laughs> <She> loves it. <laughs> <laughs> nice wow, it's really incredible. Wow. Boys, come sit down. Oh my gosh, he is so cute. <laughs> I'm glad you like it, baby. Oh, this is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, boys, for being with us. Doing all this and all this activity has taken a lot out of me, but I am really glad I did this. I feel really good right now, and I'm optimistic about my future. Finally. I had my other endoscopy, and Dr. Now said a few weeks ago, I'm almost ready for my hernia surgery. I'm so proud of you, Michael. This is amazing. And if I just lose another 30 pounds or so, that should be enough. So he went ahead and scheduled my surgery for three months later. So I'm pushing myself to try to lose more than that by then. So I am excited, very excited about the hernia surgery. Let's go walk to the water. 
Let's do it. Okay. Let's see how far we can get. You're being adventurous. Well, just remember, I float, so. I know that it'll help me feel better. And I'm hoping that removing the scar tissue, or as much as Dr. Now can, would not only help me feel better physically with the pressure I have in my stomach from it, but that it'll open up an opportunity for me to finally get weight loss surgery. Dr. Now said it's gonna take me a couple months to recover from the hernia surgery, to be ready for another surgery. But once I recover to that point, he'll do another endoscopy to see if I'm ready for a gastric sleeve operation. And now I know it's here. When you get in a better shape, we can come and yeah. walk. Michael is taking control of his whole life, and he's working so hard, and I'm so proud of him. We've seen these huge changes, and that's breathtaking and exciting and scary because, you know, we don't know. Like we were talking about, I wonder what you're going to look like when you're thin, you know? Because he's never been. The smallest he's ever been was 385, and he felt amazing then. So I can't even imagine under three what he's going to feel like. I mean, it's just, this has been a wild ride, and I just can't wait to see where we end up. You know what they say about uphill battles? You can't talk while you're waging them? I'm ready to believe the life I want is possible again. And to get excited about that and my future. I haven't let myself do that in decades because I've been through so much disappointment, but I'm not giving in to the fear and negativity anymore. I still want and need the surgery. But for the first time in over 20 years, I have hope again. I have a future I believe in now, and I can't wait for it. Well, it is the end of this story, and I hope uh, Michael will be leaner, healthier, and get the surgery approved, and his life will never be the same, and he will uh, spend more time with his family, because his family is a real treasure. So, guys, thank you for your attention. I hope uh, that <laughs> you enjoyed as much as I did, and I will be really very grateful for your likes. So, see you soon. Bye-bye.